I don't know if you guys know this, but there's literally a floating island of garbage in the middle of the ocean right now. Yeah. I think it's called Puerto Rico. Okay. All right. Okay. We're getting there. Again, normally I don't follow the national anthem, everybody. Uh, this isn't exactly a perfect comedy setup. There's some people here. All right. Very good. I like it. I have other policies that I think it should be implemented as well. Like me personally, I think football should be all year round. Yeah. So many great athletes. I don't know about oh, you. Oh, that's Texas comedian Tony Hitchcliffe. Uh, trust me, he set off a uh, furor yesterday as a result of those comments uh, made at Donald Trump's Madison Square Garden rally. Now, the Trump campaign released a statement uh, disavowing the comments, but then news stories came out today saying multiple sources say that his comments were indeed vetted by the campaign. Uh, he actually uh, planned to call Vice President Kamala Harris the C word, uh, four letter word, uh, but they struck that. But they left in the comments about blacks and watermelons and Puerto Ricans as well. Well, folks, uh, social media blew up instantly. Folks like Bad Bunny uh, uh, as J Lo, Ricky Martin, uh, they uh, posted comments of their Instagram and Twitter following uh, exceeding more than 100 million folks. Uh, Bunny announced that he was endorsing Vice President Kamala Harris. Uh, it was just a furious uh, response. Uh, people were commenting left and right. New York Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez took to social media uh, to criticize Hinchcliffe. Uh, you also had so many others as well. You had Republicans in Florida where you have 1.1 million Puerto Ricans. Man, they were sitting here running backwards trying to disavow the comments. Uh, you had uh, uh, Senator Rick Scott. Uh, you had a member of Congress. Uh, you had, of course, uh, Senator Marco Rubio. I mean, it was uh, over and over and over again. And the Harris campaign, they wasted no time. Now, mind you, when the comments were made, she was actually visiting a, visiting a Puerto Rican restaurant in Pennsylvania. There are half a million Puerto Ricans in Pennsylvania. Earlier in the day, she also had released her agenda for Puerto Rico. Her campaign today dropped this ad. All right, let's get that ad ready. Uh, again, they wasted no time jumping on this. When you talk about a very, very close race, this is what you're dealing with right now, folks. This could be the difference when you talk about uh, the margins. Do we have it? Let's go. A floating island of garbage in the middle of the ocean. I think it's called Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. I will never forget what Donald Trump did. He abandoned the island and offered nothing more than paper towels and insults. Puerto Ricans deserve better. As president, I will always fight for you and your families. And together, we can chart a new way forward. I'm Kamala Harris, and I approve this message. Joining us now is Florida Congressman Darren Soto. Glad to have you on the show. So. The Trump folks say, the comedian said, what's y'all problem? Y'all can't take a joke. Well, you have to understand the context. We saw with Hurricane Maria, uh, over 2,000 Puerto Ricans die from the hurricane. Power was out for seven plus months. We also uh, passed $42 billion in relief for the island and Trump blocked it for years. And so, you know, this just poured salt in a wound that's been around for a while. It seems like some folks started forgetting. And then with this hate rally yesterday, it just stared all of us in the face. And I could tell you the 1.2 million Florida Ricans here in the Sunshine State are angry. And we had a huge press conference this morning. We're hearing from uh, different folks from my office and, of course, New York, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Georgia, also areas where there's a lot of us. I mean, I mean, you're right. It, it was furious, the reaction, and it was not just Puerto Ricans, uh, but other Latinos as well, angry uh, with those particular comments, as well as other speakers at that rally. Absolutely. And, you know, we had Venezuelans standing by us today. We had Cubans and others. And, you know, in this state, you see a lot of people trying to disavow it. But Donald Trump put together this forum. He brought these people together. Now we're learning that they even vetted those remarks ahead of time. This is what happens. And in the home stretch, this was a great spark to remind Boricuas that we need to support Kamala Harris, who actually has a plan 
to help the island get back to prosperity and to, uh, to help with disaster relief versus just hate coming from the other side? Um, it was, uh, I mean, it was so many, I mean, when you saw the reaction, uh, I, I thought was uh, interesting. And then you had um, folks like uh, Geraldo Rivera, uh, who earlier, of course, he had uh, announced that he was um, not going to vote for his longtime friend, Donald Trump. He was going to support Vice President Kamala Harris. Uh, in the aftermath, he released this tweet. He said, a floating island of garbage for referring to Puerto Rico poisoning the blood of our nation. We have murder in our genes. He says, F these races, Latino men of goodwill, have pride in yourselves and your ancestors. A vote for Trump is a vote against self-respect. Well, it's not surprising that Geraldo came to our defense finally. And of course, J-Lo uh, came out about this as well, Mark Anthony last week. But look out for Bad Bunny, uh, the person who was most Spotified over the last two, three years as an artist with uh, hundreds of millions of followers who was staying on the sidelines, focusing more on Puerto Rico itself. And this really hit the bee's nest. Uh, and we know uh, young people of color, including the in the Hispanic community, are key folks to get out to put Kamala over the top. And we're hopeful this is uh, going to be motivating. Again, we started look, talking about numbers here. 1.1 million in Florida. Uh, you already had the attack on Haitian Haitians at 400,000 in Florida. Uh, some 500,000 in Pennsylvania. You've got uh, you know 50 to 65,000, 100,000 in North Carolina. If you got Puerto Ricans in Wisconsin and Michigan as well, uh, and, and 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 I would think that uh, the group chats and the text groups uh, have been on fire for the past 24 hours. Well, no doubt. And look. Our girl Kamala, she's of Jamaican descent. Never underestimate that Caribbean background on how important it plays in our state. Uh, when we talk with uh, folks in the Haitian community, uh, including Ms. Uh, Phyllis McCormick, my colleague from South Florida, they are animated about it. Obviously, um, the Puerto Rican community is animated about it, Dominican community, and then broader colleagues in the Venezuelan and Colombian community showed up in force today as well. So we know in our state it'll keep it close because people are animated and we're really excited about seeing a Caribbean woman at the top of the ticket. And the thing that people need to understand is that this is not the first time. This is exactly who they are. This is what his rallies have always been about. Uh, and what they chose to do was to put everybody in one bucket and just go at it. Yeah, I was surprised to see the playing of Dixie before uh, one of my colleagues here in Florida as he came on, uh, Representative Donalds. And then, of course, uh, just despicable stereotypes about the Hispanic community generally, as well as the African-American community. You know, is this really the the closing argument to, to seal the deal for uh, for Trump to win, you know, it's blown up in their faces and it was foreseeable from the get go. This was heralded as a parallel to a 1930 something rally of Nazis back in the day at Madison Square Garden. Uh, so just a, another bizarre page in the Trump campaign as we get to closing arguments. And meanwhile, Kamala Harris is going to swing states over and over and over. She's going to be making her case at the ellipsis. Uh, right before the election day. And so we see them doing all the right things to let the American people know she's got a plan for the economy. She's got a plan for civil rights, for the environment. She is going to be our defender of democracy. And when you contrast it against the other guys, it's all hate and name calling. Uh, well, how about this here? J.D. Vance, uh, Donald Trump's running mate, U.S. Senator from Ohio, uh, he said, we have to stop getting so offended when asked about the joke. Uh, he said, maybe it's a stupid racist joke and maybe it's not. Uh, he then said, our country was built by frontiersmen who conquered the wilderness. We're not going to restore the greatness of America civilization if we get offended by at every little thing. Let's have a sense of humor. Let's have a little fun. Yeah, sure. Just like he takes a joke real well. We, we've seen him blow up. But look, this is the Trump two-step. They float out a racist joke or a racist comment to rile up their base, and then they come out with some hollow apology or why are you offended by that? And it's all just to try to placate just enough folks uh, to, to 
join with his base to try to win. But it's all about from the beginning, leading with discrimination, leading with division, leading with hate. And that's the big issue. And when you look at that compared to the history of what Puerto Rico and we Puerto Ricans in the mainland have been through with Hurricane Maria and uh, with all these different attacks we've seen. Trump even try to trade Puerto Rico for Greenland. Just bizarre stuff that um, just tacks on uh, to this history. Well, absolutely. And I, I just think that it's, it's, it's important for people to understand uh, when you have Stephen, Mel- Stephen Miller up there, you know, America's for Americans as if America uh, didn't have immigrants to start with. I mean, there is no America uh, without immigrants. There is no America. And I'm going to deal with Dr. Phil in a second by saying, oh, America was built with hard work, not DEI. I think it was also built uh, by a hell of a lot of work uh, and some free labor, uh, people of African descent who were enslaved. No doubt about it. And we see the parallels between some of the Nazi comments of Goebel and some others uh, with Stephen Miller. They line up almost perfectly. Germans are for Germany. Americans are Americans for Americans. Uh, The opposition is vermin, non-human. These are all the telltale signs of fascism. And in our history, there's been just enough Americans that do the right thing to finally bring our country forward in many instances, whether it was the Civil War, whether it was during World War II. And now we're going to have to rise together again, just like we did in 2020, to avoid a a fascist future for our nation. Uh, Well, absolutely right. Uh, And it's all about uh, getting the vote. I was seeing a story earlier uh, in Politico, uh, and uh, it said, for Puerto Ricans, this is our October surprise. They were talking about uh, what was being uh, discussed uh, on radio uh, all day. Uh, and uh, this um, uh, this person, this individual here, give me one second, uh, Victor Martinez, uh, who is uh, who's on Spanish language radio in Lehigh Valley in Pennsylvania. He said uh, he's of Puerto Rican descent. He said, um, um, for Puerto Ricans, this is our October surprise. This is a gift with a bow from the Trump campaign. This is what we needed to energize the Puerto Rican community, remind the Puerto Rican community of who he is. There's no question. Victor knows our community. He lived in Central Florida. He covered uh, now uh, events in uh, Pennsylvania, we know, in Philadelphia and in East uh, Pennsylvania. There's a nearly a half a million Puerto Ricans in that big swing state, and in addition to well over a million folks here. And look, there was an attempt to try to turn the page by Trump on Hurricane Maria, which astounds me that anybody could feel that way. But as we're going through all these debates, you know, there could have been a little bit of a malaise that uh, this just strikes through with a lightning bolt because it was unprovoked. There was no reason to say this. It was a window into their soul, how they view us, what they believe about us. And they were trying to laugh at us. And they're about to see uh, the full voting power of a nearly six million person Puerto Rico diaspora spanning Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Georgia and Florida, as well as uh, some in Ohio as well. Uh, well, indeed. Well, look, it's a week to go. Uh, we'll see how this uh, turns out when it comes to early voting, also Election Day. And I certainly hope uh, Puerto Ricans in this country go to the polls in massive numbers in Pennsylvania and Florida until Donald Trump and MAGA. Uh, OK, you want to offend us? Well, guess what? We're going to give you the boot and, and hang these L's on you, not only for him, but also these congressional and Senate candidates who also stand with Donald Trump. And we're looking forward to marching hand in hand to the polls and getting our Caribbean sister, Kamala Harris, over the finish line for the good of the nation. All right, Congressman Soto, we appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Roland. Trump ain't sh- Did you know that Trump wanted the military to actually shoot Black Lives Matter protesters? I mean... Trump is not sh- He let people die during COVID and then told us to drink bleach. He tried to kill the stimulus bill and couldn't, so he delayed the money just so he could put his name on the check. Trump ain't shit. He used the death penalty to execute black men like Brandon Bernard. He f***ed up Obama's economy, lost thousands of black jobs, he started inflation, and gave his billionaire buddies a tax cut. America, Trump, Trump ain't shit. 
don't vote for that man. Nothing but. Vote Kamala Harris for president.